right, I want to stay on that topic real quick because um, you had a what was that post? Pretty much kind of saying, you know, that's not a logo. Okay. Um, I seen that post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It went really far. I was surprised. But the thing is, I but when I first started doing this, we did Wayne. Um, Wayne is from Wayne Fry. Yeah, okay. So yeah, my, my I got a, a special story for Wayne. But go, go ahead, ahead tell okay, me. No, okay. go ahead, tell me. Story, um, please. So years ago, right before I left Augusta, um, it was uh, 2006 through 2008 ish. Um, I started a group. This is the whole thing about create opportunities for yourself. Uh, I had started a group called WCM. It was Walking Canvas Movement, and Wayne was a part of that group. Um, but basically, what we did was we created our own experiences. Those people who were really into fashion, um, who wanted to either model or do fashion photography, or who wanted to be designers um we created opportunities for you to do that here in the city because it was like we all had that passion and drive to do right. those things but it was just like nothing happens here for us to actually execute on that and so we created it and so um it was fun because we traveled we did stuff with paint college for their homecoming which is has resurfaced again for me um and then we did some stuff at savannah state we did some stuff with clark atlanta um and that was it was fun because we were traveling we were um, bringing models there were models who were in that group who've gone off to be signed um, to Wilhelmina um, and like like big name, you know, brands, like Click and things like that um, from that group. We uh, we had pictures that we did. We did a photo shoot. Those made it to BET's website. Oh, wow. Like all kinds of stuff that we did. But it was just us just doing what we loved and creating a space for us to do it and to be around like-minded people and create a community of people who really cared about, you know, fashion and, and yeah. art. Um, so yeah, I love Wayne. Wayne, I've seen him through. Hey, I've got pictures of him, you know, like Louis Vuitton out, you know. Now Wayne was cool, man, and he just brought... doing all kinds of stuff. But he love, and that's a person that I can vouch for, and I can say, like, he loves what he does. He's passionate about what he does. He's quality means everything to him, um, and he has invested a lot of time, a lot of energy into pursuing that dream. Um, and so, I, big shout outs to him because nah, I, I, uh, when you have people like that who you know they work hard and they're not dependent on people to just you know use that throw their name out there or throwing out other names of other things. Like you Bring have to respect that. Just putting them out. Yeah, there. you have to respect yeah. that because he really cares about his craft. And I, I pretty much like that whole conversation started with him. I was asking him. But I guess like he didn't want to come off as he was dissing anybody as well. Yeah. So he didn't want to be like say too much and somebody take the wrong way. But he pretty much just said, Well, what I do is such and such, such yeah. and such. Because everybody, you know, and, and that's the thing is that you don't want to step on toes, but at the same time, everybody isn't doing business right here in Augusta. And a new standard has to be set. It has to be set because otherwise you're gonna get people who always feel like they're not being supported, and it's like, okay, well, why are you not really being supported? And that when you talk about that, not just that's not a logo, like that's part of the reason why maybe your business ain't being supported because you haven't invested the time and energy and resources to building an actual brand, right? Um, it's like things like that. The, the very fundamental things haven't been addressed with a lot of people running businesses here. The cartoon thing is okay because that's that can be represented as like a mascot logo. Uh -huh. That's a style of logo. It is. It's a style of logo, yeah. and it's a it's a mascot. Or sometimes it could be a combination of a mascot and an emblem, right? Um, and those are logos. But um, I think that the level of detail sometimes applied to them is not reflective of a logo. It's reflective more of an illustration. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a line that kind of separates the two, um, and that that. that Post wasn't a bash to people who have those types of logos um, because some of those do work. Like we see it, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Their logo is a mascot, which happens to be a man, Wendy's. Um, again, a, a girl, you know, this look, but those are executed properly where the details um, are very minimal um, and it translates well in all kinds of mediums. So like you see them got, you know, workers, the workers t-shirts, you see it on, you know, their signs they post, their packaging. Um, and I, I think sometimes when people do those types of logos, they don't they don't think about the repercussions of how they can execute it, if that makes sense. I've seen um, Lex comment on there, and Lex actually made my first logo. So okay, like, yeah. yeah. Lex and I are really good friends. We've been friends since, um, what, uh, I went to Augusta University for a very brief second um, before I transferred out to Southern Poly. Um, and so uh, I met him during that time period, and he was doing logos, then I was too. And yeah, we no bounced good. a lot of stuff off of each other because it was just like <clears> – <throat> Um, it was one of those things where you just connect with like minds, people who are around you who do the same thing, and they they have that same level of care for it. So, you say like that's not a logo, um, and I know you, you made a poll. Who won that poll? What won that poll? You had a poll for uh, classes doing that I a, offer. 
Was it a workshop? Yeah, a workshop. Yeah, workshops. And this one was that's not a logo brand identity design one on one for entrepreneurs. Uh, the second one was launching a T-shirt brand from purpose to product. And then the third one they could have voted for was style your space to sell out, vending display tips and tricks. Yeah, I plan to do all three workshops, um, but the first one I'm going to do is that's not a logo, and that's going to happen on February 22nd. Okay, okay. Yep. And that to me, like, even the fact that everybody voted for that just kind of shows that everybody feel the same way, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I think a lot of times, too, the reason why I wanted to do that workshop, or reason why I even communicated that through the post initially, is that um, a lot of times um, creators have to be more responsible, right? And what I mean by that is that when you take on a client as a creative, you have to communicate with them. And I think a lot of times we get off as, I'm a creative, I can have my own process, and I don't have to communicate with people. They just do what I say do and pay me for my work. And it's like, yo, that's not realistic because it's still a business. Right. right? Work for the yeah, you still work, well, to a certain degree. But it's like, you know, there's a certain level of accountability that I think creatives need to take. And so when a client comes to you and they come to you for a logo design, there are certain things that need to be explained to them about what they're getting. On what they're asking for. Um, a lot of people have gone and they started businesses and they, you know, they know like, oh, I got to get a logo because, you know, X, Y, and Z, but they don't really understand what that logo is going to do for them. And I think as a creative, it's your responsibility to explain those things. Um, so I just realized, you know, a lot of clients that I get, and um, I've been stepping away, I'm stepping away from logo design, but right. a lot of clients that I've gotten in the past come to me, they go through that questionnaire and stuff like that, and I realize like, yo, they have no idea what they're asking me for. Let's have a conversation. I've never strayed away from or um, shied away from having those conversations where people can understand. Like, I'm not trying to take your money. I'm trying to invest in what you're trying to build, right? But I, I feel like the, the workshop will only do, I mean, to me, it's only going to do one thing. It'll make somebody that maybe that, that, that fall into that criteria just kind of look deeper into what they're doing. Yeah. And it can enhance whatever they got going on. Exactly. Rather than just yeah, and what I want, disc. that's what I want. I want people, if you have a logo already and you feel like, Maybe something's missing from it or it's not doing what it's supposed to do for me or I just don't understand what it's supposed to do. Come to that workshop and we'll address that. Um, if you're a person who, are, who was launching a business and you don't have a logo design yet um, and you want to know, like, what is it that I need to be looking for and the designer that I hire to do this? What do I need to expect from what they design for me? Then you're a perfect candidate for this workshop. And then if you're a designer who's been designing logos and you don't necessarily, I mean, maybe it's something that you didn't go to school for. It's just like a you know trade or something a side hustle you've picked up this is a workshop for you as well because you need to understand what you should be giving your clients okay okay so would a um can a saying be a logo because i know that's what happens a lot of times they have a saying they just slap on the shirt and start a selling saying it can be a logo i think um so a, like a phrase can be yeah. a logo it's called a type mark or a word mark so that's like where it's just a set of words um and you've you use that as the name of your business or whatever and that's the logo you know, so um, that that can be a thing, but um, a lot of times when people do that, where they just have a type or a word mark, um, they don't take the time to get the licensing for the fonts they're using, right? Because you have to use a font to make that type of logo. And so, if you're not designing that from scratch, like it's certain things that you need to know about that as well. But yeah, that can be. So I mean, it, it's kind of safe and safe to say that even with you having the Augusta brand, like it didn't start out as being a brand; you made it just for yourself. Yeah. But organically, it just kind of happened for you yeah. that way. That's dope, though. But I also feel like even if you think about how you came up with that and the us and all that, and all that like, you did, you dug deeper, you know what I'm saying, into why you why it's even spelled like that. Well, yeah, you know? like, my, everything I do has a purpose. Like I said before, like, it's like, if, I, if you see me launch anything, best believe I have a reason for why I did it, right? And it's going to result in X, Y, and Z. There's a goal that I want to accomplish by doing that thing. Um, I don't just throw stuff out there just to throw stuff out there. Never done that. Never will do that. So even with you being a um, business model strategist, like um, how important is it for someone to have – should anybody, anybody that want to start a business, should they have a strategist first? Like, should they come with it to yeah, that first? Yeah, because um, – okay, so like one of the misconceptions about starting a business is that you have to have a business plan, Right. People that people just think that last like that. I'm about to start a business. I got a business idea. I need a business plan. Business plans are not for every business. Um, a bit, and the reason why I said that is business plans can lay out things that are projections and forecasts, right? Right. right. And business plans are important, um, but they're only important for businesses that want funding from, like, say, a bank. Yes. Like, right, if you're looking for a loan or something like that, then you need to have a business plan because you have to pitch that plan 
to that particular company okay. for them to okay. invest in you. But if you're just starting a business and you're bootstrapping based off of, you know, and what I mean by bootstrapping is that you have money um, that you've invested or people, you know, friends, family, that kind of thing who have given you money so you, so you can start a thing and you're just going to, you know, as you go, you just get funding to, you know, from those yeah. family and friends and yourself to, to keep that thing going to get it started. Um, that's bootstrapping. And so if you're going to bootstrap, you don't need a business plan. You do need a plan, but not a business plan. Got you, got you. Um, now, the business plan that I put together for people who are bootstrapping is what I call a business model canvas. And basically what that does is it just lays out literally everything you need to know about what you're doing and how you're starting it. Um, and it's all one page. So, like, sometimes you hear people say it's a one-page business plan. Um, and that kind of concept came from a book I read. I read a lot of books. Um, there's a book called um, $100 Startup. Right. I encourage anybody who's interested in starting anything or if you have started anything to read that book because it lays out for you how you can start a business with one hundred dollars. And that's literally every project I've ever launched started with less than one hundred dollars. Mm. I live by that that model. That's what kind of laid foundation for how I do business, that book. Um, and so when I launched sweatshirts, I spent, I think, sixty seven dollars and 14 cents to launch the brand to launch it. So. But how, how much did you pay if you made the first sweatshirt? First sweat. So that's what I'm saying. So, like, in order for me to make the first sweatshirt to do all the little brand and stuff that I did to get everything going, I only spent $67.14. Mm. Um, and I and I, I firmly believe when you're bootstrapping, you're doing those types of businesses, you shouldn't have to spend more than $100. And if you do, you're not being strategic enough. Right? And so how I do that is... Um, you know, it's it just laying out a strategy where, you know, I personally, for me, how I run business, I never spend a dollar before I make a dollar, right? Okay. Um, a, after that hundred. So, like, a, after I've invested a hundred or less into it, I don't, when I do anything else from that point, I'm not spending anything until I've made anything. And the way that I can do that is when I did the sweatshirts, right? I did a pre order, right? You paid for your sweatshirt and then you received it at the date where I sent them out. So anybody who bought that sweatshirt, I think I gave like a two-week time period, if that, like a week time period for you to purchase the sweatshirt. Yeah. I took those funds from them paying for the sweatshirt, and then I went and bought all the resources that I needed. But I couldn't do that until I knew what it cost for me to make everything, right? Hold on. Hold on. All right, time out. <laughs> you made this every sweatshirt yourself? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. You just, yeah. you, you just sat there and made them. I mean, well, so how I did it was... Um, I outsourced, let's see, so there was this, it was the sweatshirt itself, right? And then there was the uh, embroidery on a sweatshirt. Right. There was uh, the hang tags. I think that was it. So, yeah, so, like, for the sweatshirt itself, I outsourced that. So I, I got a manufacturer. They made that sweatshirt for me. Shipped those sweatshirts for me. We did the embroidery across the front of it. So I cut, literally cut the letters out, laser cutter, um, laid out all the fabric into the laser cutter, cut all the letters out. Then we embroidered the letters. Um, and then I actually physically, the hang tag that's on your shirt, I made that with my oh, hands. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like yeah, I but that's a I a lot of work, but that's good. That's that's what's <laughs> and up. that's why that was part of the reason too why I only did fifty. Yeah. yeah, because I wanted to make sure that every sweatshirt was properly made. It was no, you know, like quality matters to me. So um, so yeah, that was a part of that too. But going forward, are you going to now that everybody know about the brand? Would you do a hundred? You still gonna do fifty? Uh, like, it just depends on what it is. Because or... when I did the t-shirts, the t-shirts were different. I did the t-shirts. The only reason I ended up making t-shirts was because everybody kept hitting me up about the sweatshirts. Right, right, right. And I was like, I'm not doing any more. So I released the three t-shirts. It was the white, the gray, and the black on black. I released those, and I did a hundred of those. Okay. Um. Yeah. And then people started asking. Me. So every, everything was driven by consumer ask. So like the next thing people were asking, like, I want to do a photo shoot with my kids, but they don't have a shirt. Can you make kid shirts? So then I did uh, kids tees and onesies um, and I released that. And then people were still hitting me up about that darn sweatshirt. <laughs> so I was like, OK, well, let me do three. Uh, I think I did. No, it was five. Five colors of the sweatshirt. I released that. Um, Fifty. Uh, of each one? 50 of each one of the sweatshirts. Um, and then over the summer, I did like a summer collection where I had some different colors of t-shirts with the Gasona, and I released that during the summer. So it was just like little spurts where I just like, okay, I'm tired of people asking this question. Let me figure out how I can do this. Okay, let me do that. All right, there it is. When is when the sweatshirt coming back? Uh, I don't know. The season almost over. So yeah, it's, it's got to yeah, be. So maybe it'll come back in like September, October. Okay. 
Yep. Um, but I think, so this last one I did uh, sweatshirts that came, they yeah, it was around October, November when I did these. It was the burgundy, the olive green, like kind of like my jacket. Um, there was a cream color. There was a black on black. And then there was something else. Oh, it was a gray with a cream, uh, cream letters. So, um... So, yeah, I threw those out there, and um, that color wave was recepted really well. So, I don't, I don't know what color wave I'll do for next yeah. next fall, but it'll be something cool. This this is kind of off topic, but um, I, now I'm listening to you talking, all the stuff you do, I know you mentioned, um, like, dating earlier. Like, do you feel like, or if you have ran into that, that you're, you seem like a dominant person? Do you feel like that? <laughs> I seem like a dominant person. Yeah, you do. I'm not to take uh, that. <laughs> no, when I say dominant, that's not that this second in a while. <laughs> now, I'm talking about, like... Like when you when you want this done, it's gonna get done. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, just, I just say militant. I'm gonna just say that. That okay, makes yeah. more sense. That's a better word. Um, do you feel like that uh, intimidates men from wanting to talk? I to have you? actually heard that I can be intimidating, but I don't think it's and on your the drive. Level like of... you got a you got a certain kind of drive. So yeah. that I... man probably either has to match that drive or or, or or exceed it. And it's gonna be hard to exceed that drive. Even talking to you, like I'm pretty sure Slim say the same thing. Like you could, me and him work a lot, but I could tell like people I talk to. You seem like you do just as much as, as we do, or if more, if not and more. She's super organized, <laughs> and she's a mom. Like it's, no, it's like it's all this stuff. Trips me out, dog. No, Drives for real. Like crazy. she go to Starbucks to do work. Like that's like I can't even eat food half the time. Really? At, at, at restaurants. Okay, oh, nah, so that's where I meet. Let's talk about that. For, before we address the dating, let's let's address the um, the living as a creative or a person that has like a lot of drive, right? So because. I was raised in the environment. My, my parents let me be who I am freely. Mm-hmm. I developed skills over a course of time that helped me to organize myself. Because I wasn't always organized. It, it didn't happen until when I reached about maybe 9 or 10, that's when I started figuring out, like, I got to figure out a way to maintain this because otherwise I'm going to be all over the place. So my mom went. <laughs> she said she, 9 or 10, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, like that, last week. I, but, that, <laughs> <laughs> but I've always been doing that. Like, I've always had the freedom and liberty, and I don't take that for granted either because I realize some people didn't have that experience right, right. right but but that's the kind of experience I had so my mom took me to Walmart bought me a notebook and I've always kept a notebook and in my notebook it lays out literally everything I need to do so like I got good handwriting too oh thank you <laughs> but I I write out everything and I think that frees up my mental space right I don't know if you're like the kind of creative I am but my my mind can go be a million miles a yeah. minute, right? I got all these ideas and everything is going, but I've learned how I can release that for myself by writing things down, right? And then once I write down a thing, like, so like I, I'll write down like a goal, right? And then I'll break that goal down into every step I need to take that I know of to get to that goal, right? And then I'll prioritize like those steps and give myself a timeline on how much time I got to get it done. And so that's kind of how I lay out things. And I do that with my everyday, too. I call it time budgeting. And maybe I need to teach a class on this. Yeah, but I, I'm about to say, you need to be a teacher. Like, you need to teach this stuff. A lot of people need that. But I think, too, like, you have to know how you... Like, you can't adopt somebody else's stuff, right? You have to know enough about yourself to apply some level of organization to you. So if you know that I can't write down topics and follow those, then don't write down topics and try to follow those. Yeah. You spend your time organizing in some other type of way that's going to be beneficial to you. You know what I mean? And in time budgeting, like... Sometimes people talk about like time management. And the reason why I don't call it that is because time management makes you feel like I have to be doing X, Y, and Z, and this has to get done today. Yeah. If it doesn't get done today, then no. I make a list for myself for the week. I might make one for the month, and I might say, in this month, I want to get all of this done. And I don't know what days I'm going to do it or whatever when I say, say that, but I just know it's going to get done in that month. And then as weeks go by, I refer back to what I want for the month, and I'm like, okay, this week, I probably got time to do that. Let me put this on this week. Oh, this week, I got time for that. And then when I get to days, I'm like, okay, this week, I have to do this, so let me do this on this day and just kind of break it down from there so that it's not overwhelming to you. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe. I but I was saying that I, I mean everything for everybody. But I do think you should like she write that down too. Down. Look, <laughs> <laughs> and she gonna write the stuff down to how she need to become a teacher. No, yeah. no, no. Oh, okay, so I'll be honest. Like really, I'm not that I haven't been honest this whole time, but I'm gonna be extra honest. <laughs> I'm honest now, right now. <laughs> now I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't 11, but I'm a 10. But yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, the last relationship I was in, we broke up over that. Right, right now, too much stuff. Y'all argue, so write it down. We, uh, <laughs> no, I'm we mad. Broke up. This is why I'm mad. No, we broke up over the Talking the point. ambition, mm. the the not matching ambition. Okay, uh, that was why we broke up. So it was like, 
you know, um, sometimes people can appear to be very supportive of your drive and your ambition and like how goal oriented you are. Um, and so that's what I felt like. I think I felt like he was really supportive of that. But then as time progressed, I learned that like through not not through conversation, but just in his actions, that he wasn't as supportive as he had led me to believe. 